here. Yeah, cue up Bono and you too. A beautiful day, and it's an incredible day. We mix sports and the law every Thursday. Our timing is good because one of the greatest legal gaps, I think, in history occurred today where the U.S. government just uh, mistrialed away what most people thought was a slam dunk win against Roger Clemens. Steve Moskowitz is here as always. How did this happen? That is going to be a great mystery because it was so basic. I mean, the judge talked about a first year law student would be better. Forget about that. You don't have to be an attorney at all. The judge says, don't do something. And right in his face, you do it. That re you never want to get any judge mad. But that really flies in his face. So what's happened is defense counsel asked for a mistrial. It's thrown out. Now, it would be wonderful if it was thrown out with prejudice, which means that would be over. But it's not. So right. they're going to come back on September 2nd and say, OK, should he be retried? My prediction would be yes. But I can imagine the judge having all kinds of warnings don't do it again. But the, also, there's some problems because it's all over the media. And the problem is the cat's out of the bag. So somebody that didn't know it from hearings, now we see it in the general news broadcast. All right. So let's just take it step by step. Uh, I asked, how did it happen? I mean, how did it really get into the courtroom today? Uh, Laura Pettit's testimony, Andy Pettit's wife, his former teammate with the Astros and the Yankees, was not allowed into this trial. Right. There was a video in the courtroom where a transcript of her testimony was in Correct. open court. So how did they allow that to even be brought into the courtroom at all? Well, physically, the attorney brings it. You, you're not physically But the judge told like you that. not to bring it in. That's Why would you bring any video of that in the room? I sure wouldn't have done that. But I think 99.9% .9 of the lawyers wouldn't have done that. And the problem is, in opening, and the thing that bothered me so much, it, it's not something technical. It's not in the heat of battle. We're in a terrible argument, and something slips out. Here, it's opening. You say, we're going to show you this. And you showed up. You said, wait a minute. That's just what the judge said not to do. Right. And you're doing it. That, that's just such a slap in the is, judge's is it, face. I mean, we're all saying this is the stupidest thing they've ever seen in open court. But is it possible that they're smarter than all of us and they were trying to subliminally uh, present this to the jury and sneak it in and they thought the judge is not going to call a mistrial on this. Maybe we can get it in real quickly and get away with it. It's never a good idea to anger a judge, <laughs> well, ever. <laughs> Ever. And the risk they take is Rusty is going to be arguing that, you know what, that was so prejudicial, Judge, throw it out. My client can't get a fair trial. This should be over. Now, I don't think the judge is going to do that, but the government has risk that the judge, if he's angry enough, because remember, the judge is already angry about other things in this trial. It's enough that the judge, maybe he'll consider it. And if that happens, the case all goes away. I don't think it will, but that's a risk they're taking. U.S. District